everybody, E here. Welcome back to another retro book review. Today we are back on that Dean Koontz bullshit with The Key to Midnight. Uh, this was originally written under the Lay Lee, Lay Nichols uh, name. Is it Lay or is it Lee? I, I never know. It's L-E-I-G-H. Uh, let's just say Lee Nichols. Um, but uh, this one was originally 30,000 words longer. Um, if you are a writer or you know manuscript format, that's usually about a hundred pages of finished material. Um, and then he cut, he cut that much and then he went back and added another 5,000 to it. One of the things that I remember uh, most vividly about this book is wanting it to be over. <laughs> I cannot imagine that this already 416, 17, 18, 19, 420 page novel, I cannot imagine this being a 500 page novel. That is batshit crazy to me. Uh, another couple things that uh, I remember very vividly about this one is jazz. Uh, I also recall that in one of my other uh, reviews, what was it, I think for The Vision, something like that. Um, I mentioned how you, you can listen to jazz while reading Dean Koontz and it always seems to fit. Dean Koontz himself is a jazz uh, fan, a big band era fan, so most of his stuff has jazz in some way, shape, or form. Uh, it's But it's not as well done as in something like a Haruki Murakami uh, type of way where he's always talking about music, whether it be old classic rock or jazz or blues or whatever it might be when he does it. With Dean Koontz, it's more of an air of pretension. Um, it's like, hey, I know these fancy things and now you do too. Uh, which brings me to another thing that I mentioned in my written review, which I'll link down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, kink, kinks, yeah, kinks. Of course, kinks, why not? Koontz. <laughs> Koontz goes on and on um, about food in this one. There's uh, whole sections about uh, dishes in that are named in French. It's French cuisine, and he's talking about these things. I think one of them is duck and prune sauce, but it's written in uh, in French. So if you don't know French, you have no idea what he's talking about. And this book way back in the way back was originally published in 1975. Uh, this version it was republished in 1995. 1995 is still before Google and all that stuff or you know the majority of the internet. Um, I remember the internet coming into, I remember, I remember the internet about 97, 98 I could be completely wrong, but that's about the time I remember uh, first having AOL and um, so that even if it re to republish this in 1995, imagine not knowing French, imagine not knowing what the hell he's talking about, and him going on and with this foodie nonsense, um, and you having absolutely no idea what he's talking about because the names of these dishes are in French. He never goes back and lets you know, you know, what these dishes are. Now, if there are popular dishes that I that I don't know, um, it's, it still ruined the read for me as a reader. Well, that that's not the only thing that ruined it for me. Um, but it, it's just one of those things that I didn't know, so I can't enjoy that aspect of the book. Um, this one also occurs in Japan, so that one kind of threw me because Dean Koontz usually writes about America, not only that, but he also writes about Southern California normally the Newport Beach area. That's usually where he, his books are located. Um, somewhere around there, anyways, it's usually Southern California with the Bougainvillea plants and all, all that nonsense. Uh, this one has a blonde love interest, a uh, lead character. I remember that much. It doesn't have any dogs. Uh, as far as the Koontz checklist is concerned, um, it has the typical uh, psycho killer that is also handsome. Um, it ticks off some other things as far as the Koontz checklist is concerned. If you want to read my review, I will link down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, other than that, I can't remember a damn thing about this book. Um, the Lee Nichols name, I remember really, really enjoying when I was younger. Like Shadow Fires, this one, The Key to the Midnight, I even remember vaguely, vaguely rem liking The House of Thunder, but I'm reading that one right now with Dee Lee, and that one, spoiler alert, probably 
the worst Dean Koontz book I've ever read. I can't believe that, I was just telling her tonight, I can't believe that the same person that wrote that book wrote Phantoms, or Watchers, or Lightning, or The Bad Place, or Darkfall, or any, no any number of his good books. Um, but with The Key to Midnight is another one of those that I don't remember anything about the actual plot. I know uh, it happens in Japan. I know there's a lot of fluff. There's a lot of build-up. And Lee Nichols' name seems like the type of, uh, of pen name where he tried to be a little more literary. He tried not to just have the punchy uh, dialogue, the punchy uh, narrative. He tried to be a little deeper than normal, um, and it didn't really work too well because he's not that kind of writer. I don't think he does that very well. Um, whereas, you know, like a, a Stephen King can go off on a tangent about, you know, someone's his family history or whatever, and he makes it entertaining. With Dean Koontz, it just always feels like he's he's going through the motions. Like he's just trying to, trying to fill in, you know, a, a word count, which is funny because he cut 30,000 words and then added another 5,000 words back to it. Um, this era of Stephen, not Stephen King, this era of Dean Koontz is odd also because it's around the time that he started pumping out um, the rewrites. Uh, so you had all of his normal stuff coming out in hardcover, you had Phantoms, you had Midnight, you had all these things coming out on its own. And then you had these odd paperback books also. You had uh, The Mask, which was an Owen West book. You had, uh, let's see here, um, uh, The Fun House, which oddly, it was a paperback only. Oddly enough about The Fun House is, we'll talk about this more when we get there, that was actually a movie um, that he wrote, I think he wrote the screenplay for under another name. But I'll talk about that when we get to, uh, when we get to that review. The last time I tried to read The Fun House, it was a, di di a DNF, a do did not finish. Um, and I don't know if me and Dee Lee are going to get back to it again this time or not, or if we're just going to call it quits. Uh, next up on our, well, we're reading The House of Thunder right now, but next up after that one is one of my all-time favorite Dean Koontz books, and that's Phantoms. So you're getting at least one more negative review from me, unless somehow there at the end uh, The House of Thunder turns into an epic read, which I highly, highly doubt. But I've been surprised before. Um, so you're getting one more negative review before hopefully we get into the fun stuff again. But have you read The Key to Midnight? If you have, or you just want to talk uh, talk trash or talk good stuff about Dean Coons down there in the comments below, please do. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Dean Coons review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!